Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to walk you through a basic editing process for a high ISO uh, starry night photo. And so we're going to use Lightroom Classic to get the base of the image looking better, but we're also going to use uh, Topaz, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI to really clean it up, to get rid of the noise that you'll see is in this photo, but also to add a little bit of sharpness. Um, and you can see if we look at the metadata here, I took this a couple years ago. Uh, this was in the Dolomites region of Italy, just an absolutely phenomenal uh, area for landscape photographers. These mountains are actually gigantic. Um, you can see this was taken with a Sony a7R Mark III and the Sony 16 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's pretty much a staple for most landscape photographers. As far as the exposure goes, um, in this article I talked about how uh, you want to make sure that your shutter speed is appropriate based on the focal length uh, that you're using, but also based on the intent. So I wanted the stars to be as kind of pinhole uh, sharp as possible. Uh, there's a the very, very slightest amount of movement, but it's really not that noticeable. And really, if I uh, if I used any faster of a shutter speed, it would have been even more difficult, even though it, I was at ISO uh, 2000. And typically when you're uh, photographing starry night photography, you're going to want as fast of a lens as possible, and you'll typically want that lens to be wide open, at least for the stars. So that's why this is at f2.8. So that's it for the uh, metadata. Let's start editing the photo a little bit. And you can see if we look at the histogram here, obviously pretty much all of the data here is veering towards the black point in the shadows, which makes sense because it's a night photo. And so the first thing I'm going to do here is open up the exposure. So I'm going to bring that data. You can see, uh, again, this was taken with the a7R Mark III, uh, which is a pretty capable camera with a, a really big sensor. So I'm opening this up over here. I'm also going to uh, bring out the black point a little bit and open up the shadows a little bit. I'm also going to open up the white point and the highlights, but not too, too much. Now, it's a night shot. So realistically, I mean, a lot of this is in shadow. I'm going to go ahead and I don't tend to use the contrast ladder. I like to create my contrast using uh, an S curve. So I'm going to go ahead and plot three points right here. This is for highlights, shadows, midtones. So for the highlights, I'm going to bring up the highlights just a little bit. You can see how the highlights are getting brighter. So just a little bit here. And then the shadows, I'm going to bring that down. You can see how we get that really nice contrast. Then for the midtones, I'm going to open that up a little bit just to brighten that. And so you can see if we turn off the tone curve, how the image is a little bit flat, and then we add some really nice contrast. Now I'm going to go back to the exposure. Let's open that up just a tiny bit more right around there. And then I'm going to take my white balance dropper here, and I'm going to sample it off of the snow in the, in the shadow area here. And you can see that the white balance value is pretty much the same, so we're in good shape there. Now, if you look at the histogram, you'll see that there is a the shadow warning is illuminated. If you hover over it, you can see any areas here where you're actually clipping shadows. But none of it really bothers me too much. If it bothers you, you can open up the shadows a little bit more bring the black point out a little bit more until uh, really until it, it kind of turns off and becomes gray, but that's too much for me. Like I don't mind. It's okay that you have a little bit of uh, shadows clipped. It's really not a big deal, especially because it's in such a small area uh, in the photo. Now, the other thing that's bothering me right now is this is either a plane or uh, shooting star or something, but it's just kind of distracting for me. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is go to the healing brush here. I'm going to click once on one end, then I'm going to press and hold the shift key and click on the other end. And that creates a straight line from one point to the other. And that's really great for healing or cloning out things that are straight, like um, wires uh, or poles or trees, or in this case, that kind of light streak. And so you don't have to draw across or anything. It's just really easy to do like that. 
and that's it for that spot healing brush. A few other things I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disable sharpening. I don't want any sharpening applied by default by Lightroom because we'll use Sharpen AI for that. Uh, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to enable profile correction just to see what that does. You can see how uh, this profile does a nice job of one, fixing that barrel distortion. I tend to use profile correction when I use my wide angle lenses because the wider the focal length, the more there's an opportunity to get what's called barrel distortion. And you can see here the way it's kind of bowing in the middle. And so that fixes that. Also, there's a bit of a natural vignette with the lens. And so Lightroom is correcting for that. But if you don't want any of those corrections, you can see here the two things that the profile does. One's distortion, one is vignetting. So with vignetting, if you don't want that correction, you can turn that off, but I actually don't mind it. And then I'm gonna go down here to transform again. So I was really low, <laughs> like these mountains are massive. You can see these trees, how small these big trees look compared to the mountains. So you can see the way the mountains are kind of bending towards the center. And so I wanna fix that a little bit. I'm gonna go to the vertical slider here and I'm gonna start by kind of making them a little bit more vertically straight. And then I'm gonna to go to the scale slider here. I'm gonna scale in a bit. And then as far as the aspect goes, I'm gonna kind of squish that in a little bit. Now you can see these uh, white areas here, basically Lightroom is actually adjusting the composition uh, to conform to whatever you want to do uh, with the transform. And so there's this checkbox here called constraint crop, and that will automatically always crop in. And so if we disable that, you can see how much of an improvement we made. It's not perfect. It, it really can't be perfect because in order for it to be more or less perfect, I would have to be levitating in the air a few hundred feet just so that I was more uh, parallel to these mountains. But still, again, it does a really nice job. So I feel like this transform uh, tool over here is often overlooked in Lightroom. Uh, a lot of times users will just click on this checkbox and leave this alone. But uh, these sliders here can be very powerful. And again, it's just something to consider if you want to uh, bring back some of that original aspect of the scene here. Again, because we use such a wide angle lens, everything looks like it's bending backwards towards the center. And here we kind of fix that a little bit. And so if we take a quick snapshot, let's press the backslash key. That is what we started with. You can see how dark it is. Um, and then we brought out a lot more detail. But you can see also with that detail that we brought out, all of this noise, especially in the shadow area and throughout the photo. And so the first thing I wanna do here is get rid of that noise. So I'm gonna right click, go to edit in and select Topaz Denoise AI. And normally if I was just working for myself and not recording a video, I would probably use PSD, that's typically what I like. But for this video, I'm just gonna use JPEG and I'm gonna make sure that these settings are as is uh, and then click edit to head over to Denoise AI. Now that we're in Denoise AI, I wanna compare all four of these AI models at once. So I'm gonna go to the comparison view here. Let's move the focus box somewhere around here. I think this is a good representation of the image. And so what I'm doing is taking a quick look from quadrant to quadrant. You can see that we have the four models here, standard, clear, low light, and severe noise. And if I'm choosing between these, I think clear looks the best here. If I press and hold, you can see the unedited original version and then the processed version. You can do that with every quadrant. And so I like clear here, so I'm gonna select it, making sure that this quadrant is highlighted in blue. And I'm gonna go back to the single view here to get a larger view. You can see how it does a really nice job of cleaning this up. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is zoom to fit. And because I'm gonna send this to Sharpen AI afterwards, I'm gonna change the enhanced sharpness from high to low for this model. You can see if I press and hold, I mean, you can even see that all that noise kind of go away and we still have a lot of that edge detail, which is really important for these kind of starry photos. This, the night doesn't look uh, overly muddy or uh, having any sort of lack of definition. So now that we're done here, let's go back to Lightroom by clicking on apply. And in Lightroom, if we go back to the grid view, 
This is our original. This is our denoise version. So we can compare these really quickly uh, and just kind of zoom in to see just how much cleaner it is. All that noise is gone. And we still have all that really nice detail. But I want to bring out some more of that detail. So let's go ahead here with this photo. And I'm going to right click on it. This is again the denoise version. Go to edit in and go to Topaz Sharp and AI. And just like before, let's select JPEG um, and just keep these settings and then click edit. And just like in denoise, what I want to do is compare multiple models at once. So let's click on comparison view. And you can see that we have three primary sets of models. We've got motion blur, out of focus, and too soft. Now, I don't think the motion blur models will work good for this. So I'm going to focus on the out of focus, very noisy, very blurry, and too soft, very noisy, and very blurry. So I'm going to click up here in this top left quadrant. I'll click out of focus, very noisy. This one will be out of focus, very blurry. This one will be too soft, very noisy, and this one will be too soft, very blurry. And then I'm going to move the focus box to an area where I can see both the stars and an area that has detail. And so looking between these four models, I actually like the out of focus very blurry the most. And you can see the way the detail snaps. The stars get more uh, detail, but the mountain also really gets a lot of detail, which I like a lot. And so with this quadrant selected, let's go to the single view. And that looks really good. Again, all that detail just snapping in. And then let's go to zoom to fit to see the full photo. And again, just looks great. I can see all of the details snapping back into place. Now that I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and click on apply to return back to Lightroom. Now let's go ahead and compare the original with our noise reduced and sharpened photo. So original is on the left here, the edited versions on the right. And I mean, just look at that, the way all that noise and distraction is removed, but we have all that really rich detail in the mountains and in the stars. I mean, to me, that's that's what it's all about when you're editing night photos is you want to get a clean, sharp result without the distracting noise, but also without sacrificing all of these really rich details. Now, the last thing I'll do is I'm going to go to the grid view here. Let's go to our final photo. We'll go to the develop over here and then let's go ahead and click on the new masking tool in Lightroom and then we'll select sky. Let's disable that overlay. And the only thing I really want to do to the sky is add a little bit of this dehaze slider. That's going to add a bit more definition. You can see how the stars really start, start to pop out here. And I like to do this at the end. I don't want to do this um, before I fix tone or uh, apply noise reduction or sharpening. This is something I want to do towards the end. Um, but I think it does a really nice job of adding just a little bit more pop to the photo. We can also bring out a little bit more of the star detail with this highlight slider. So just a bit, not too much. And now that we're done with the mask, I'm going to go ahead here to add a little bit of a post crop vignette. Not too much, just a little bit. Let's bring it closer towards the center and add a nice feather. And there you have it. That is how I use Lightroom, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI to edit a night photo with a bunch of stars in the sky. If you want to try out Denoise AI or Sharpen AI or Gigapixel AI or Video Enhance AI, head over to topazlabs.com to download a free trial today, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.